The last major addition to SOPs that I want to talk about is something a bit more fiery. Yes, as with RBDs, we now do have a SOP-based pyro solver. Let's turn a pig head into smoke by creating a pig head, diving in there. I will set this to easy and add two levels of subdivision to that, like so. Let's also just add a null here. So that's the object, which is gonna be, in my case, the smoke source. And yes, what you can and maybe should do to explore a bit of that is when you're heading to the pyro section here, you can just drop down a pyro configure billowy smoke or a fireball that is, or maybe a spreading fire. All of those are cool effects, absolutely. But in order to show you what's happening under the hood, I wanna go over manually building them. And it's not as complicated as it used to be. So the first thing I'm gonna drop down is a pyro source, which we're gonna to use to source density. So that means how dense a smoke is. And for that, we're gonna use particles or points in this case, but we just want to scatter them on the surface. And let's make this point cloud a bit more dense by dialing down the particle separation to say 0.02, like this. And then let's source an attribute, namely density. So each of those points has now an attribute called density written on it with a value of one. Next, let's rasterize those points here into a volume using the volume rasterize attributes. My voxel size here, let's set that to the same value as the particle separation here. So just right click in here, copy parameter, go to the volume rasterize and just paste the relative reference. So now I don't have to take care of dialing in this separately or independently of this particle separation. I can just dial in the overall simulation resolution here with the particle separation attribute. And all of that is fine and dandy. And the only thing left to do is set up the attribute I want to rasterize in my volume rasterize, namely density. So I'm now getting this density volume here. Nothing too fancy. We knew this workflow from Houdini 17.5 already, or I think it was already in 17. Correct me if I'm wrong. Finally, let's drop down the new thing in here, the pyro solver, which now finally is just a simple SOP. And I wanna go over the viewport, hit D to configure the display and go to the background tab and turn that to a dark background and maybe switch off the grid so I can see something here. That's a really coarse volume. So let's, in the pyro source, decrease the whole particle separation and also let's propagate this value to the pyro solver, which has got this voxel size here. So again, on the pyro source, right-click, copy parameter, pyro solver, select this, right-click, paste relative reference. So now when I click on this, I can see I've got a high res in, and that may be a bit too excessive. So again, dial this back to 0 0.02. If I just stubbornly hit play now, nothing much is happening here. That is because in my pyro simulation, for the smoke to actually rise or do something, it needs a temperature to be kind of carried upwards with a bit of buoyancy. Let's set this up in the Pyro Solvers sourcing tab. That's where stuff is emitted. And in this case, we only need two operations. One is sourcing the density, and the other one, let's delete that and re-add it, should source the temperature, which is a field that's internally being used to drive the simulation's temperature at certain areas. And we wanna source this temperature from the same density field that we use to source density. So basically we're saying where there's lots of density, there's also lots of temperature, like this. And we're just gonna add it into our simulation. All right, let's hit play again. And now we're seeing that smoke rising. However, this is not as billowy as I'd like it to be. So let's reset this and go over our parameters. And basically these are the standard PyroSolver parameters just exposed to a really nice SOP interface. So in the overall setup tab, I don't wanna change anything here. Let's go to solving and let's head straight to the shapes tab here. And in here, I wanna dial back the dissipation so the smoke does not disappear as quickly. So we're getting thicker smoke now. And also I wanna check disturbance, which can be dialed in the disturbance tab down here. And I'll just increase the cutoff value a bit, maybe the roughness, that's about it. Let's stop this. So this is kind of my default billowy smoke simulation in here. However, all this emission here, the smoke emission is a bit uniform. In reality, you won't have a smoke source or a fire source that's just uniformly emitting gas or smoke into your scene. So to modify this, we'll be adding a bit of noise to the density attribute before we rasterize it using an attribute noise SOP here, which we'll wire in here, highlight it, and you can see by default it's set up to generate a noise value on the points color. Instead, however, we want this to be a density value and it should be a one dimensional, a float value. So when we highlight the volume rasterize here, we can see after and before 
this changed those density values a bit. However, this whole scale is a bit too big for my liking. So let's scroll down here and adjust the noise values. So I want my element size to be a bit smaller, 0.2. And also let's remap my noise, ranging between zero and one. And let's remap this distribution here by adding a few points like so. So we're increasing the contrast in that noise distribution a bit. Also, I want this noise to be animated. So when I hit play now, we can see this undulating noise on our density field here. Let's highlight a pyrosolver again and hit play. And that is a really thick billowy smoke we're emitting in our scene. However, what if I want some wind to actually blow this, let's say along the x-axis? Well, as with RBDs and as with Vellum, what you can do is double clicking on this pyro solver here and you're taken immediately a few steps into the solver, namely to their forces input. And in here I can wire forces affecting the simulation. And this has this nice note here saying that I should use gas microsolvers in here. So when I hit shift and start typing gas, we can see all of those nice gas nodes here, which we can use to modify our pyrosim. In my case, I'm just gonna use the gas wind here, which I'll wire in there. And let's set the wind direction along the x-axis. It's already set up like this. So let's just hit play and see what comes out of this. And yes, that's what I'd expect. The smoke is blown to the side. So if I dial up the wind scale to say 10, reset this and re-simulate, we can see a few things happening here. I'm getting artifacts because my solver is not fully able to resolve these strong wind conditions. And I'm also getting clipping at the boundaries. So if you have something like this, just reset this, go up again. What I recommend on the one hand is in the Pyrosolver simulation tab here, let's increase the global substeps to two, maybe three or four which is already starting to look better. And also if you're getting those clipped edges and your simulation volume is not properly resizing, what you can do is in the Pyrosolver under solving and advanced, go to the resizing tab and increase the padding a bit. So this volume now has a bit more padding towards each side. Let's compare this, small padding, larger padding. So if we simulate and have strong wind conditions or strong force conditions that are in danger of being cut off at these edges here, now with increased padding, they are given a bit more room to live. All right, let's reset this. Also dial back our padding again. And in our simulation, let's dial the global substeps back and dive back into the pyro solver here. Uh, reset the wind scale to one. And let's add another node to shape the simulation. Maybe just a bit of turbulence, just for this example. Again, tab and then gas turb for gas turbulence. However, as you're seeing now, where am I supposed to wire this in? I mean, if I try this, it'll just snitch this wire from the gas wind. What do I do if I want both? Well, what you do is pretty similar to what you do in DOPS. I mean, basically this is DOPS. You just use a merge node, merge in both the gas wind and the gas turbulence or whatever node you wanna use here to shape the simulation and then wire the output of that merge in the null. And what's happening here is, as with DOPS, the nodes that have been wired into the merge will be executed left to right. So the gas wind will be executed first, and then the gas turbulence, which, Maybe let's just dial up its scale to one and hit play and see what comes out of the simulation. Yeah, maybe a tiny bit more turbulent, this simulation. I don't wanna spend much time dialing this in. This is just an example to show you how you can hook up multiple nodes into this force output using a merge. All right, let's get back up. So the chain we just built is basically doing billowy smoke. And yes, what you can also do is just hit the tab, start typing pyro, and then we've got this configure billowy smoke. So let's just drop that down. And what that creates is a chain of nodes starting with a smoke source, in this case a sphere, which we're gonna get rid of because we want our pig head to be the source. So let's wire in the null in here instead. Highlight the pyro solver. And we've got pretty much the same setup we already built with a few parameters dialed in differently and dialed in by more talented people than me. So I think that'll look better by default. Just hit play. And there you have it, your billowy smoke simulation set up for you by the new Pyro sub tools. This node chain is nothing different than we built here, with the only difference that we are sourcing two separate fields, one for density, one for temperature, instead of doing it like here in my node chain, where we abused density as an initial temperature value as well.